Dear students, today we will consider the topic language as a reflection of culture in the course of introduction into intercultural communication. By the end of the lecture, you should be able to distinguish the reflections of social and cultural cult structure of society in the target language, compare contrast the connotations of the words homeland and patriotism in English, Kazakh and Russian. The past decades have witnessed a rapid development in social linguistic and findings in this field have greatly enriched our understanding of the relationship between language and society. Language vary from one place to another, from one social group to another, and from one situation to another. Language variation describes the relationships between the use of linguistic forms and factors such as geography, social class, ethnic groups, age, sex, occupation, function or style. The combination of these variations, fact, various factors, results in an individual ideolytic that is, their particular or idiosyncratic manner of speech, when a variety of language shared by a group of speakers it's known, is known as a dialect. All speakers of a language speak a dialect of that language. Dialect is more a political term than a linguistic one. By definition, everyone speaks a dialect. This question in, is which dialects viewed as a standard, correct or official languages, and which ones are marked as the dialects or slang. Poor English literally means the English of the poor, the rural, the weak. Dialects of languages can vary in pronunciation. For example, Central American speakers of Spanish pronunciation pronounce C before E and I and Z as the English C in the word city, while in most of Spain they are pronounced like the English TH sound in thin. Variation may also come in the grammar, when structures are changed by addition, replacement or uh, subtraction of grammatical units. Dialects may also vary in vocabulary. Those variations serve as a, a reference point uh, in dialect geogra geographies. Certain social dialects of English use the term pancake for a very thin cake made of butter poured onto a hot, greased surface and cooked on both sides uh, until brown. Other English speakers call the same thing flapjack. Still, others use the word uh, griddle cake or flannel cake. The reality the thin brown cake is the same even though dialects have developed different terms. Dialect diversity reflects the fact that language change over time and that people who live in the same geographical area or maintain the same social identity share language norms. In other words, they speak the same dialect. Dialects themselves are collections of ideolects and thus so are languages. Idealect is another term that we must uh, that we must be familiar with. An idealect is simply the technical term we use to refer to the variety of language spoken by each individual speaker of the language. Just as there is variation among groups of speakers of a language, there is variation from speaker to speaker. Thus, language mark cultural identities and entire so societies may, differ may define themselves according to the language and dialect they speak. So we differentiate geographical dialects and social dialects and one more standard language and other kinds of language varieties. Geographical dialects arise when groups of speakers are isolated from one another by a barrier for example, rivers, mountains, lakes, oceans, and national boundaries, to name a few. Over time, these speakers on each side of the barrier sound less and less alike. In the Appalachian Mountains, speakers were isolated for generations from those in the valleys, and as a result, their dialect has marked differences in both grammar and vocabulary. 
For instance, the following are the perfectly grammatical sentences in Appalachian. I disremembered. That means I forgot. The different geographical dialects are the different varieties of the same language spoken in different areas. For example, modern English is used as the first language by tens of countries in the world. Therefore, there exist British English, American English, Canadian English, Australian, New Zealand, South American English, and so forth. There are all geographical dialects of varieties of modern English. Language and dialect has become a flag of proclaiming one's identity. Dialects are usually used or preferred in oral communication. The three major U.S. regional dialects are the followings. The first one, Northern Region. This region consists of New England from Vermont to New York and all the states between the Great Lakes and the Pacific Ocean. The second, Southern Region. The region includes Delaware, Maryland, Virginia, North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, and all the states bordering the Gulf of Mexico, including Texas. A Midland Region. This is the last region consisting of most of the United States. It extends from Pennsylvania and New Jersey, uh, west into Ohio, and south along the Blue Ridge Mountains of Virginia into uh, Carolinas. As for the British English, it is the form of English used in the United Kingdom. It includes all English dialects used within the United Kingdom. Dialects and accents vary amongst the, fourth con the four countries of the United Kingdom, as well as within the countries themselves. There are also differences in the English spoken by different socio-economic groups in any particular region. The main divisions are normally classified as English or English as spoken in England, which comprises Southern English dialects, Midland English dialects and Northern English dialects. Welsh English, not to be confused with the Welsh language, and Scottish English, not to be confused with the Scots language. The various British dialects also differ in the words that they have borrowed from other languages. The Scottish and Northern English dialects include many words originally borrowed from Old Norse and a few borrowed from Gaelic, though most of the structure and common words are conserved or Anglo-Saxon. Hence, we see the following words uh, meaning church, stream, feared, hillside, chest, box, uh, long ago and other. Social dialects imply that the use of the language is not only linguistic behavior, but also a social activity. Without a language intelligibility to all the members of the community, the community could be by no, by no means exist, not to speak of its development. Social dialects reflect a person's speech not only where he comes, but also what class he belongs to, and a general tendency that the speech of the higher classes demonstrates less original variations. A society is usually composed of various social groups differentiated by age, sex, social, economical and political backgrounds, education, occupation, uh, religious beliefs or other social factors. Moreover, different social groups speak different social dialects. There are two approaches to the relation between language and society. One approach is that society is taken as a whole in which it is watched how language functions in it and how it reflects various social differentiations. And uh, the other is that society is studied from the point of view uh, of an individual social member. A social dialect or social act often re revealed through language, which indicates the cultural attitudes and status uh, preferences of the communities in which we live or groups with which we identify. Speakers of a language may often use their language quite differently due to their different social status, such, such as 
social, political and economical backgrounds. The standard variety of a given language, for example, British, uh, tends to be the upper class social act of a given central area. Speaking the wrong social dialect in a certain environment may result in awkwardness or difficulty for the speaker. Standard language is the most type of the dialect. It is a particular dialect of a language that has been given either legal or uh, quasi-legal status. It is said to be the most correct language of a nation, usually but not always based on the tongue of a capital city. A standard language is defined by the selection of certain regional and class markers and the rejection of others. It is usually the language of the capital city and defined as the selection of certain regional and class markers and the rejections of others. This is the version of a language typically taught to learners of the language as a foreign language and most texts written in the language follow its spelling and grammatical norms. Generally, we, it is uh, used in the news media and literature, it is described in dictionaries and grammars, it is taught in so, so schools and taught to non-native speakers when they learn uh, the language as a foreign language. Some of the features that identify a standard language include a recognized dictionary or group of dictionaries which embody a standardized spelling and vocabulary, a recognized grammar which records uh, the forms, rules and structures of the language and which comments some norms and uh, category, categorize others, a standard system of pronunciation, an institution promoting to the use of the language and given some authority in defining the norms of its use, the use of the language in public life, a canon of literature, the teaching of the language standards of grammar and spelling in schools, the selection of this particular dialect of a language as being especially appropriate to be taught to learners of foreign language learners. In addition to the main varieties of the language, we distinguish other kinds. Where belong slang, jargon, pidgin, croil, and ebonics. Ebonics imply that sometimes members of a particular minority ethnic group have their own variety, which they use as a marker of identity, usually alongside a standard variety. This is a minority dialect. Examples of African-American uh, vernacular English in the USA, London Jamaican in Britain, and Aboriginal English in Australia. African-American English, also called Ebonics, is a minority dialect spoken by most African-Americans throughout the USA. Ebonics is a variation of English entirely made up of slang and southern word shortenings. It is generally spoken in the neighborhood and has almost no defined syntactical structure. The concept of homeland, rodina and wotan are closely connected with the concept of patriotism and help to define it. The Merriam-Webster's Dictionary defines patriotism as love for or devotion to one's country. The word patriotism comes from a Greek word meaning fatherland. For most of history, love of fatherland or homeland was an attachment to the physical feature of the land. In, the Eng in English, it has only the meaning of fatherland, while in Kazakh, Kazakh and uh, Russian languages, it has the meaning of fatherland and motherland as well. In the United States, the meaning of patriotism has once again uh, been on the public agenda. In addition, it is seen as a blind attachment to certain national cultural values, uncritical uh, conformity with prevailing group <coughs> ways and rejection of other uh, nations as outgroups. As for the Russian word, patriotism was not merely a love for the place where one was born, but it is sense, but it is in the sense it means 
What something one did, its active, not passive, sense of patriotism, as it is the in the West. According to Verbika, the scientist, the semantic meaning of the word homeland in the in English are as follows: This is a country. Someone else was born here. That person is like part of that country. That person no longer lives there. That country is an important part of the person's identity, and etc. As for the meaning of the word "rodina" in Russian, it means a country. Here are some of the examples. I was born in this country. I am like a part of this country. I couldn't be like a part of any other country. I think something like this when I think about this country. This country is like a person. I'm like other people in this country. When I'm in this country, I feel something good. I I couldn't、uh, feel like this in any other country. We can draw the conclusion that languages mark cultural identities, and entire societies may define themselves according to the language and dialect they speak. So the connotation of the word patriotism can be considered from the following aspects. First of all, patriotism is the deep affection of people to his homeland. Secondary, patriotism also expresses the love of people to the material civilization and spiritual、um, civilization. Thirdly, patriotism is historic and specific. Thus, the given examples demonstrate that every language has key concepts expressed in key words. Which reflect the core values of a given culture. So the words homeland and patriotism have important historical dimensions. They have. They are core cultural elements which are important for understanding implicit ideological aspect of cross-cultural communication. With the help of this video lecture,、uh, you should be able. To answer the following questions and submit to the Google Classroom, the questions are: How do you define dialects? How does cultural and social re relation reflect the language of the speakers? What kind of regional U.S. dialects do we differentiate? Can you describe the peculiarities of geographical and social dialects? Can you suggest the meanings of the concepts in Kazakh language?